Recently, several YouTubers have published videos discussing the topic of AI and how it's been rapidly changing the world. In my opinion, the best three videos on the topic are from Tom Scott, John Tron, and The Spiffing Brit. I'll include links to their videos in the video description, and each of the videos covers slightly different parts of what's currently possible with AI. So you might think that AI is overhyped, it's not going to make a big difference, and if you're a younger viewer who was born after the early 2000s, you likely don't appreciate how much life changed with the advent of the internet. I was born in 1995, and while we already had computers in our house, we even had dial-up internet, everything began changing as email became commonplace and everybody started carrying a smartphone in their pocket. Now, those technologies had a longer incubation time. You had to have enough money to be able to afford it, but now with the advent of AI, all you really need is internet access and a computer. It doesn't even need to be your computer. You just need a computer with internet access, and you can already take advantage of a lot of the stuff that AI can do. And while the internet as a whole had a longer incubation time, AI is completely different, as the impacts are already happening now, and the advantage for early adopters is manifold. I'm That Chemist, and in this video, I want to highlight some of the things that you can already do with AI for free. You've probably heard about ChatGPT already. If not, here's a brief summary, written by ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a highly advanced learning model developed by OpenAI that can be used by people in their daily lives to improve productivity and convenience. By asking questions and receiving accurate responses, individuals can save time and effort in areas such as information gathering, language translation, and even creative writing. Additionally, ChatGPT can also provide suggestions and recommendations, making it a valuable tool for problem solving and decision making. Whether used for personal or professional purposes, ChatGPT has the potential to enhance one's day-to-day -day life by streamlining various tasks and providing helpful insights. One of the things ChatGPT excels at is writing emails. Oftentimes, we already know what an email needs to contain and who it is for, but ChatGPT will do most of the heavy lifting for you. Here's one example of that. The theoretical scenario is we want to write an email to someone named Philip, and we're trying to plan our son's bar mitzvah. As you could probably guess, I've never been to a bar mitzvah. I don't even know how bar mitzvah is spelled. But that doesn't stop ChatGPT from figuring out what we're talking about and making sure that Philip is hyped about our son's bar mitzvah. So those are all the main things. When you're thinking about writing an email, you just have like the main things you need to talk about and you somehow need to be persuasive. It's always like a song and dance trying to write an email that's written well and it comes across good. And eventually you just settle for how it goes. Now you see for ChatGPT, it just does it for you. It writes the whole thing for you and oftentimes you need to make small changes, but the whole email's there, right? You're just cleaning up a little bit of the extra work and that's way easier than writing an email from scratch that sounds good. So it's clear why you might want to try writing emails with ChatGPT. What if you have existential questions? What if you want good advice on how to eat healthier? Not to have some service claim that they'll solve all of your problems, you just want to eat healthier. Well, ChatGPT can do that too. You can just type into ChatGPT like, hey, I want a healthy meal plan for the next week. Even if you had something like dietary restrictions, you could just do something like this. And even if you're not thrilled with the exact recipes that it gives you, it gives you inspiration. So you can go find real recipes that are tested and true, which might be more applicable than the recipes ChatGPT gives you itself. The whole idea here is to filter down every possible meal to the healthy ones and then have a variety of what you could eat over the next week or so. So that's pretty convenient, but do you know it would be even more convenient if it also gave us a grocery list? So I asked ChatGPT to provide a grocery list at the end. So you might want to make leftovers in practice, save them for later in the week or freeze them for a future meal, but nonetheless there's options available. So ChatGPT will just do this for you, and then it'll also go through and make sure that you have all of the ingredients you need in one grocery list. So this is pretty cool, you know, but I think we could probably push ChatGPT a little bit further. I want it to give me a detailed recipe for all of the meals on one day of the week. So why don't we just say Wednesday? Let's get it to give us the recipes for two of the meals on Wednesday. And a lot of the time with ChatGPT, you might not know what it's capable of doing yet. And so you just have to ask and see what it does and see how good the recipe is. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these recipes will probably work. I would bet that they're somewhere between like a 4 and a 6 out of 10, but maybe they're even better. If you ever try out a ChatGPT recipe, let me know down in the comments because I read all of the comments, at least for now. So ChatGPT can also help you make meals. That's pretty, pretty practical. It can help you consolidate your whole life a little bit. So what if we want ChatGPT to do something else? What if we want it to schedule some activities with our family and friends? 
You know, sometimes it can be hard to come up with ideas of what you want to do with your friends, and it's good to have a balance of different types of activities where your friends might just want to do the same thing over and over. They might actually be more interested in doing something varied. So let's ask ChatGPT if it can help us out with our family and friends problems. So here I've asked it to create an activity plan for family and friends for the next month. I'd ideally like to see friends at least twice and family at least once. But I don't say see family at least once because I don't know what the appropriate frequency to see your family is. So I just tell it to put in an appropriate amount of family time. What ChatGPT does with this is it just suggests like three different activities per week, some with friends, some with families, and it'll do that for the whole month. Afterwards, it also provides a rationale of why it picked the activities that it did. And if you ever want to know why it did something, you can just ask. It'll tell you. It'll often do a way more impressive job than you would guess based on the input that you gave it. So ChatGPT, I kind of think of like super Google. And I think the better it gets, the better it will be for everyone. When you first came across Google, when Google started being a thing, if you were alive when Google became a thing, you could just type into Google anything. And it was this like world changing thing where you could get an answer. Now, the advantage of ChatGPT over Google is that not only does it give you the answer you want, but it'll give you a proper answer, not some like wiki how random answer that's been copied from some textbook across 100 sites. It will generate the correct answer for you most of the time. Now, if you start asking it complex questions, like for instance, I was asking it about some frontier molecular orbital theory, it was wrong. It was wrong because the specific terminology used in chemistry matters a lot so that people know what you're talking about, and ChatGPT could not navigate that language yet. But that doesn't mean it won't. I think that one day it definitely could. I would say that in general, it's interesting to use ChatGPT the way you would use Google. Just ask it questions. Ask it for an explanation of how a concept works. It can oftentimes do a really good job of that. And so ChatGPT kind of seems like the sky's the limit, at least for now. Now, there's some other YouTubers, such as Dax Flame, who've taken this to the extreme, where Dax is essentially letting AI control his life for a year. Dax was struggling to come up with content, he wasn't sure what was right to do, and so he's just been asking the AI for advice, and he's going with it. He's got a series of videos where he lets AI control his life, and you might be interested in checking those out. I'll also include a link to those in the description. You might think, well, it's all still super artificial and not very real. There's no, like, creative work that AI can do. Well, that's not true either. So why don't we get ChatGPT to tell us a funny story about the poop knife. So here's the story that ChatGPT created. Once upon a time, there was a family who had a special utensil in their kitchen, known as the poop knife. No one knows exactly how it got its name, but the story goes that it was used to scoop things out of the toilet and into the trash. One day, the family was hosting a dinner party, and all their guests were gathered around the table. In the middle of the meal, one of the guests asked their hostess for the soup ladle. The hostess, in her rush, grabbed the poop knife instead and started serving the soup with it. All of the guests were horrified, but the hostess didn't realize her mistake until she saw their reactions. In an effort to save the situation, the hostess announced that the poop knife was actually a rare and exotic utensil used only in the finest households. The guests, not wanting to offend their hostess, pretended to be impressed and even tried the soup with the poop knife. From that day on, the poop knife was no longer used for its original purpose, but as a conversation piece at dinner parties. And that, my friends, is the story of the poop knife. It may not be the most sophisticated joke, but it always gets a laugh. Now, you might think that AI seems pretty impressive, right? Well, what if we wanted it to come up with a title for a video? Could it do that? It probably couldn't write a title that would make people actually want to share the video, right? Oh, oh, I guess, I guess it can do that. Well, AI can't generate images, though. Oh, oh, wait, yeah, Dolly is a thing, too. Uh, yeah, um, never mind. Well, AI can't do audio, can it? Well, it turns out that AI can also do audio. If you rewatch the video, all of the sections with a blue dot on the screen are sections where the audio is actually being read by Descript AI. Descript AI works best when you're just like correcting a couple things in scripts. I haven't used it at all for my videos so far, but I've looked at it and I've played around with it a little bit. And I think the takeaway from this is clear. Change isn't coming. Change is already here. The only thing that's stopping change from happening sooner is all of us realizing what's about to happen. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day.